So we saw in the last video that you can take a bunch of things like uh, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and you could rearrange them. Uh, turns out you could rearrange them 120 ways, and those 120 ways are all known as uh, permutations. And one of those 120 permutations would be um, for whoops. Four, five, two, one, three, for example. So that is of the hundred and twenty ways. One, two, three, four, five is one of them. Four, five, two, one, three is is, is another way. And describing this, I mean, you could describe it just by drawing a picture with four, five, two, one, three. But there were three ways described in the last video, and one of them is called cycle notation. And it's it takes a little practice to get the hang of it, but the way cycle notation goes is um, any random shuffling of the five things actually is a collection of what are known as cycles. In other words, the number one ends up in the fourth position. So I put a one here and then I put a four. That says that number one goes to position four. Then I look for the four and see, okay, well four, what position does he go to? Well, he goes to position one. And then I close the cycle because uh, 1, 4 means 1 goes to position 4 and 4 goes to position 1. But there's other numbers. So I go to the next smallest number that hasn't been like accounted for yet, which is 2. 2 happens to be have moved into the third position, so I put a 3 here. Then I look for the 3 and say, where is he? Well, he's in the fifth position. Then I look at the 5 and say he's in the second position, and since 2 is the first number here, and in this way, this cycle notation is a way of describing this permutation. This says that 1 is in the 4th spot, 4 is in the 1st spot, 2 is in the 3rd spot, 3 is in the 5th spot, or, sorry, the first thing has moved to the 4th spot, the 4th thing has moved to the 1st spot, the 2nd thing has moved to the 3rd spot, the 3rd thing has moved to the 5th spot, and the 5th thing has moved back to the 2nd uh, spot. Now these permutations don't just have to describe the, the starting state of the five numbers. They could also describe um, some kind of change in, like, like a move in one of our games. So imagine I have the one, two, three, four, five are sort of in their original position. So it's like a game. And I can do things like I can take, I'm just going to go like this with an arrow. Um, let's say I'm playing a game where I can swap two of the things. And I want to swap the thing in position two with the thing in position three. I could write that movement as two comma three, which means the thing in the second position moves to the third position, and the thing in the third position moves to the second position. So the board after that move would look like this, one, three, two, four, five. And then let's say I do another movement and I decide I want to swap the thing in position one with the thing in position two. I write one comma two. That does not mean switch the numbers one and two around. It means switch the thing that's in position one, which happens to be a one in this case, with the thing that's in position two, which happens to be a three in this case. So this would look like this, three, one, two, four, five. So the first sort of game puzzle that we worked on had sort of these swaps, which is also known as a two cycle, uh, as the legal moves. So if I open up the app and go to puzzle number one, and I want to do, for instance, the move 3, 7, that would not be switching the 3 and the 7, but it would be taking from this shuffled state the thing that's in position 3 and the thing that's in position 7 and clicking them and then the board would change in that way.
I could also take the um, the app that was done uh, puzzle challenge number two, where you can do a three cycle, and maybe I can go like two, nine, eleven, and when I do the thing in position two, the thing in position nine, and the thing in position eleven, those would uh, would swap around. Uh, I should mention that the order does matter of the numbers, but whether I say 3-7 or 7-3 for a two-cycle, those are the same thing. But you, but the order kind of matters when there's a three-cycle. 2-9-11 uh, two, means 2 goes to position 9, the thing in 9 goes to position 11, the thing in 11 goes to position 2. But although the order matters, there are some orders that are equivalent, like 9-11-2 would be the same thing, and 11-2-9 those all would be the same thing, because in each of them, 2 is going to position 9, 9 is going to position 11, 11 goes to position 2. But these are not the same thing, for instance, as uh, 2, 11, 9. Like, that's not the same, but there are there is more than one way to describe it. I like to describe it with the smallest number first in each of my cycles, so I would do it this way, but it would be accurate to call it by one of these other two things also, although it would not be accurate to call it by, uh, to, to arrange the numbers in that way. So there's 120 different permutations that I can do with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Each one describes a way that sort of five things can be, you know, moved around. And if I name two of them, and they do this a lot, they use Greek letters, alpha. So 2, 3, 5 is an example of a move I can do where the thing in position 2 goes to the thing in position 3, goes to goes to position 3, and the thing in position 3 goes to position 5, and the thing in position 5 goes to position 2. And here's another of the 120 permutations. This one is described with two cycles. This is one where the thing in position 1 goes to position 2, the thing in position 2 goes to position 1. And the thing in position 4 goes to position 5, and the thing in position 5 goes to position 4. So these are two different. And what I want to see is what happens if you do one after the other. And one way to see what happens, what the result is of doing both of these, of doing alpha followed by the beta, this is a good opportunity to use the, the arrow diagram representation. We can kind of see. Then we'll actually learn a nice shortcut for this. But the alpha thing looks like this. 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 5, 5 goes to 2, 1 stays where it is, 4 stays where it is. So that's a visual way to describe this, um, this alpha, which is written in cycle notation on the top. Now to see what happens when I um, to see what happens when I do beta right after alpha, there's sort of a clever way to do this, which is to put dots underneath these and put another one, two, three, four, five, and put dots over those. And then I'm going to write in with arrow notation what the whoops what the beta move does. So the beta move makes 1 go to 2, and makes 2 go to 1, and makes 4 go to 5, and makes 5 go to 4, and 3 stays the same. Now, I can sort of combine these. Into one cycle notation, look, well, sorry, one arrow notation looking thing that kind of is the result of doing one after the other. I'll just go alpha, beta, like that, like almost like multiplication. It's sort of do the alpha and then the beta. Well, watch what happens. I'll give you the way we do this. We, we, we start from the one. We sort of follow the arrows. We go. It ends up at one, and then it kind of takes a path over here. So it ultimately ends up at two. So over here, I just make a single straight arrow from one to two. Then I go to two and say two goes to three, and three stays at three. So my two ends up going to three. Then I go to the 3, 3 goes to 5, but then from here the 5 goes back to 4. So on, our, on my compressed picture, I'm going to make 3 go to 4. 
and 5 goes all the way to 2, but down here, the 2 goes back to 1. So the 5 goes all the way to this one. Oh, I left out the 4. 4 stays at 4, but then down here, this 4 goes to 5, so in the sort of resulting picture of both, it goes like that. So if I were to do move alpha followed by move beta, it actually turns into this. This is called composition of permutations, and we say that alpha times beta. Now that, written in... Um, In cycle notation, in cycle notation, we could say alpha composed with beta. It's kind of like times. In cycle notation, look what happens. It's 1 going to 2, and 2 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 4, and 4 goes to 5, and 5 goes back to 1. So this is the, um, that's what the answer is in, in this uh, cycle notation. That 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is not like the thing didn't change. That, it actually changes a lot. The thing in position 1 goes to position 2, the thing in 2 goes to 3, the thing in 3 goes to 4, the thing in 4 goes to 5. But that's a composition of permutations, and that's what it looks like for alpha sort of composed with B, with beta. A somewhat surprising thing about permutations getting ready to now do what if I did beta first and then alpha so for that one the, the beta move looks like this, two goes to, one goes to two, two goes to one, four goes, four goes to five, five goes to four, three stays. And um, the, the alpha move is um, one goes to one, two goes to three, three goes to five, five goes to two, four stays. So when I create when I create a single thing, I'm just going to go like that and say beta sort of times alpha. That one, when I compress this into a single picture to describe the result of doing the beta permutation on something followed by the alpha, look what happens. One goes to two, but then the two goes to three, so the one goes to the three. The 2 goes to the 1, and the 1 stays at the 1, so 2 goes to 1. 3 goes to 3, and then to 5, so this 3 goes to 5. 4 goes to 5, and then the 5 goes all the way back to 2, so over here, the 4 goes to 2, and 5 goes to 4, and 4 stays at 4. So that's what it looks like, and when I write this one in cycle notation, 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 5, 5 goes to 4, and 4 goes to 2. So notice how that's not the same answer. And it is possible for alpha, beta could equal, but it doesn't have to equal. And usually it doesn't. So it's like, Unlike regular multiplication, this kind of composition of permutations is not um, commutative. Now, there is a much more efficient way to create the, um, or to find the result of composing the two uh, permutations, alpha, beta, like that. And to get the answer uh, in cycle notation, all you know, in one kind of slick way. And it's really useful to know how to do this. And I'm going to teach you how to do that now without doing like before with those arrow diagrams. Those are pretty useful for like seeing what's going on. But as far as like actually calculating out 
the result of doing this a alpha permutation followed by the beta permutation and seeing what the result is in cycle notation there's a way to get directly there and it goes like this first we're just going to write the two permutations in cycle notation next to each other now this little sort of time sign in the middle you don't even really need to to write that because of the way this process works so we start by taking number one the smallest number there is and I imagine putting one into this and when one goes in like if I put two and three comes out but if I put one in one stays in position one so sort of one goes in to this first one and then the one comes out of it because it doesn't change at all then the one goes into here and this says that one goes to position two so then the number two is going to come into this one since there's no two in this one uh, two is going to stay as two now we start over and we put two into this first thing and the two becomes a three and then that three gets put into this thing but it's th that one stays as a three so a three goes into there and stays as a three because there's no three in there then we come back and we put a three into this guy and the three becomes a five or goes to position five that five then gets put into this next one which stays as a five then that five gets put into here so there's a five here and that becomes a four and then finally we put a four into this thing which stays as a four because there's no four in that cycle so then the four goes into there which stays as a four again because there's no four there and the four goes into there and becomes a five and then finally I put a five into this and the five becomes a two what goes to position two that two then gets put into here and there's a two there it goes to position one because cycles around then the one goes into here but since there's no one there the one stays as a one and we close up the cycle. Now that is kind of confusing the first time you see it, but it does get us the same answer that we got before. I'm going to do this process again. We get an opportunity uh, to practice this also. Then we're going to see how this applies to some of the puzzles in the app. So here we're going to see if we get the same answer that we got with the arrow notation. Okay, so we start with one. Uh, one goes in, becomes a two. Two goes into here, stays as a two. That two goes into here, becomes a three. Then the three goes into here, stays as a three. That three goes into here, stays as a three. That three goes into here, becomes a five. Five goes into here, stays as a five. That five goes into here, becomes a four, because the five goes to the four. That four goes into here, stays as a four. Then the 4 comes in here, stays as a 4. The 4 goes here, becomes a 5. The 5 goes in here, uh, becomes a 2. And finally, the 2 goes in here, becomes a 1. That 1 goes in here, stays as a 1. That 1 goes in here, stays as a 1. Now you can compare this to what we got when we did this with the, um, with the arrow diagrams. And you will see we do get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for alpha followed by beta. And we do get 1, 3, 5, 4, 2 for beta followed by alpha. And that is a little confusing to imagine the numbers going in. And if sometimes it changes and sometimes it doesn't, depending on if that number is in the, if that number is represented there or not. But we are going to get to practice this. This looks like a simpler one because each of the alpha and beta are pretty small. But something new kind of happens here that I want to show you. So when I do, whoops, alpha followed by beta, look what happens here. Start with one, one becomes a two, and the two goes in here and stays as a two. Now I put the two into here, it becomes the three, then the three goes into here, it goes back to a one, but I want to write a one here because I already have one over here, so I close the cycle. But I'm not done yet because there's still the 3 and 4. So then I find the smallest number that hasn't been represented yet, which in this case is the 3, sort of on, or the 3, it just is, is in this thing. So, I, so, I, so I'm going to start by putting 3 into the left-hand one, 
the 3 becomes a 1, and then the 1 goes in here and becomes a 4. So we have 3, sorry, when I picked the 3, I wrote it here. And then the 3 became a 1, and the 1 goes to 4. And then when I put 4 into here, 4 stays as a 4. Then I put 4 in here, and it goes to the 3, and I close the cycle. So the product of these, or the composition of the permutations could become, you know, more than one. It doesn't have to become one cycle like it did in the other two examples. If you pull up uh, the app and you go to um, puzzle number uh, puzzle number two, and we go to um, solve so that everything's in order, and we actually go ahead and do one, two, three, followed by, and this is position one, four, three, so position one, position four, position three, we will see that the result is that one and two have switched places and three and four have switched places just like it uh, predicted. To get more of a feel for this, you can go to um, puzzle number number 10 and go to solve so that everything's in order. The way puzzle 10 works, there are these eight moves which you can do with these orange buttons and um, I'm only interested in two of them. Move A, and you can see that the numbers there are 6, 7, 10, 11. So if I push A over and over, we see that those four numbers kind of cycle around. And what move C does, you can see the numbers uh, 1, 6, 11, 16. That causes the numbers on the diagonal to cycle around. So I want to see if I can predict what happens when I do... Oh, and also we can see that A, C... A followed by C does a different thing than if I do C followed by A. So I'm going to see if we can kind of predict this here. I have A and C, what they are uh, listed. Whoops. And if I do A, C, I get 6, 7, 10, 11, 1, 6, 11, 16. So one goes in, stays as a one. That one goes in here, becomes a six. So I have one, six. Six goes in, becomes a seven. Seven goes into here, stays as a seven. Uh, seven goes in, becomes a 10. 10 goes in, stays as a 10. 10 goes in, becomes an 11. 11 goes in, becomes a 16. 16 goes in, stays as a 16. 16 becomes a one. So AC, it predicts that. We could actually see if that's right. If we go to the app and we do A followed by C, we can see that it is true that number one has ended up in position six, number six has ended up in position seven, number seven has ended up in position 10, um, number 10, <laughs> which was in position 10, ends up in position 16, and the thing in position 16, namely the 16, ended up in position one. On the other hand, if I, if I instead did C followed by A, 6, 7, 10, 11, that would go like this. 1 goes in, becomes a 6. 6 goes in, becomes a 7. 7 goes in, stays as a, to the beginning, stays as a 7. 7 goes in, becomes a 10. 10 goes in, stays as a 10. 10 goes in, becomes an 11. 11 goes in, becomes a 16. 16 goes in, stays as a 16. 16 goes in, becomes a 1. 1 goes in, stays as a 1. And if we go to the app, we will see that if I start from a stop position to C, A, it's true that the thing in number, the 1, the thing in position 1, which was a 1, ended up in position 7. The thing in position 7 ended up in position 10. The thing in position 10 ended up in position 11. The thing in position 11 ended up in position 16, and the thing in position 16 ended up in position 1. So that's kind of how this applies to these games. We can kind of like predict the results of doing multiple moves and maybe creating more moves, and maybe some of those combinations of moves will be really useful, more useful than like a single one of the moves. As a challenge for you to work on, you could push pause and see if, if this alpha is kind of a complicated thing with two cycles 
and so is beta. Can you work out what alpha beta is and what beta alpha are? Push pause, and then I'll uh, work these out when you unpause. Kind of interesting because you start with one, of course, is the smallest number. One becomes a five, five stays as a five, five stays as a five, and this five goes back to the one, which means one goes back to one, which means I don't even need to write that that one cycle because it's just like its own thing. So I'm not going to have that at all. Uh, but the other ones, if I put two in, two becomes a one, then one stays as a one, one stays as a one, one becomes a three. So two goes to three. Three, back to the beginning, three stays as a three, three becomes a six, six stays as a six, six stays as a six. Uh, six goes in, stays as a six, six goes in, becomes a four, four becomes a two, two stays as a two. So that cycle closes up. Uh, number four hasn't been represented yet. Four stays as a four. Four becomes a three. Three stays as a three. Three becomes a five. And five goes to two. Two stays as a two. Two goes to four. Four stays as a four. So that's the answer for that one. And just to put up uh, the answer for the other one, one it, it ends up becoming one, six, four, two, three. So what we've done in this video is kind of built up some of your skills on working with permutations and seeing what happens when you combine permutations, how sometimes the order matters and, and if you switch the order you'll get different things. That's what happens in puzzles also. And um, you'll see that this is going to lead us to be able to do some much more complicated things in future videos. But for now, uh, for this video, you learned the skill of, of calculating, calculating out the results of composing two permutations to form uh, a new one.